الہی السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم We seek the protection of God from shaitan who has been expelled from the kingdom of the special grace of God If we avoid the satanic habits of arrogance and defiance the satanic habit of arrogance, whatever we know to be true and righteous by the guidance of the God-given intellect, the divine revelation and the human conscience, we submit to the truth and we fight against evil. And if we avoid the satanic habit of defiance, whatever we know to be evil and wrong and false, we don't commit those acts. And if we have reliance on God, definitely we will get the strength to be able to discern between what is right and what is wrong, to be able to resist and to overcome any temptation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We seek the grace and the guidance from God because He is the all perfect being. Nobody can achieve any goodness or perfection until and unless Allah wills it so. And we ask for His grace and guidance because He is Rahman. His Rahma and love and care and mercy reaches out to each and every entity, brings it to life, sustains it, and enables it to reach its goal of perfection. And we seek His grace and guidance because He is Rahim. His extra love and support and care and reward is available not to all, to those amongst us who voluntarily seek Him, believe in Him, and follow His guidance. Alhamdulillah. This week, I quote a praise of God from the sermons of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, sallallahu alayhi Allahumma laka alhamdu, على ما تأخذ وتعطي وعلى ما تعافي وتبتلي حمدا يكون أرض الحمد لك وأحب الحمد لك وأفضل الحمد عندك حمدا يملأ ما خلقت ويبلغ ما أردت حمدا لا يحجب عنك ولا يقصر دونك حمدا لا ينقطع عدده ولا يفنى مدده All praise belongs to you, O oh God, for whatever you give me and whatever you take away from me. Praise belongs to you for the afia and the well-being that you grant me or no, the bala and the affliction that you inflict upon me. This phrase, this phrase gives praise to God that every state and every affair that the individual undergoes is from God. And because God is the one who is administering that particular condition to his servant, and because God is all wise, there is wisdom, He is all loving and merciful, therefore there is mercy. In fact, even if it's a punishment, even that punishment is for the purpose of bringing us back to His mercy. So praise be to Him. And then Imam salam describes the nature of this praise. That this praise I want it to be the most pleasing and most acceptable to you a praise which is most liked by you, a praise which is the best of all the possible praise, a praise which is so wide that it, re it fills whatever you have created. That means for every created entity, I would like to praise you. A praise which 
reaches and attains what you desire from us, a praise which is not veiled from you because of our sinfulness, a praise which doesn't fall short of your praiseworthiness, a praise which is continuous, a praise which is plentiful and countless. This is one of the most comprehensive praises that have been reported by the Imam alayhi salam. A praise which is countless, which is endless, which is spaceless, which is timeless, which is faultless, and which is the best possible praise for every possible condition that the human being may undergo. And then Imam alayhi salam begins to describe God. فَلَسْنَا نَعْلَمُ كُنْهَا عَظَمَتِكْ we cannot fathom and grasp the essence and the core of your being of divinity. Of course, though your core being is incomprehensible, it's not possible for a limited being to be able to comprehend the unlimited, but that doesn't mean, therefore, we should be disappointed and that we can never know God. We know basically and fundamentally you are there, you are self-existing, you are self-subsisting, you are everlasting. Never ever for a moment sleep or not even lesser than sleep, slumber or drowsiness overtakes you. You are aware continuously of every particle that you create and you sustain. لَمْ يَنْتَهِي إِلَيْكَ النَّظَرْ وَلَمْ يُدْرِكْكَ بَصَرْ No intellect and mental vision can envision you fully. You are incomprehensible. Even the deepest, most profoundest philosophical thinking cannot understand the totality of your core essence. Not only the mental eye, even the physical eye cannot visualize you because you're not a material, physical entity who can be visible. Rather, أدرك تل أبصارا وأحصيت الأعمال وأخذت بالنواصي والأقدام In fact, you are the unlimited in his power and therefore you control every movement of every eye. You know exactly what that eye can see or cannot see. In fact, you record every deed that the eye performs and the rest of the organs. In fact, you have total control from the forelock till the feet of every being. You can seize someone totally and paralyze him. However, your unlimited power shows itself in the whole of the creation. Whatever we see all around us, above us, below us, visible and invisible of your creation, and we're amazed and we wonder at the enormity, at the diversity, at the profundity of your creation. Yet all of this compared to what we cannot see. وَمَا تَغَيَّبَ عَنْهُ عَنَّا مِنْهُ What is غَيْب, invisible to us. وَقَصُّرَتْ أَبْصَارُنَا عَنْهُ Even those things that we wish to see as man improves his ability to visualize through optical aids, be it the telescope, the most advanced telescopes can enable us to see up till a particular limit. The fundamental, ultimate limitation is the speed of light. You cannot see something beyond the speed of light. So there are some things which are going to remain, though they are visible, beyond our power to visualize them. It's not only the visible which will remain unreachable for us. <laughs> there are a lot of invisible which are unreachable for the mind which can see the invisible. But 
This invisible, unreachable world is much greater than the visible world. The problem is man is lost even in the visible world. He can't reach out to everything. Forget about the invisible, which is even more so unreachable. As one of the scientists claims that we have the known and the finite, and we have the unknown, which is infinite. Intellectually, we stand on, on a small island in an ocean of the infinite invisible. Our business in every generation is to be able to reclaim from this small island a little more of the land from this huge ocean, but we can never ever be able to fathom and encompass the whole of creation. Praise be to God and praise be to Imam Ali salam, who taught us how to praise God. Community of believers, I wish to remind you as I do myself of the necessity of taqwa. The birth anniversary of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam has been also designated to be the Father's Day. And therefore the message of taqwa, I would like to quote from him as the father that he writes to his son. It is said that it is referring to Imam Hassan alayhi salam, the letter number 31 in the Nahjul Balagha. But the message that is given to Imam Hassan is not specific for him. It is general and it can apply to everyone. Indeed, he is the bayan and the other children granted to him. But he is also the spiritual father of the whole of the ummah. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Ana wa aliyun abawa hadhihi al-ummah. Me and Ali alayhi salam are the fathers, the spiritual fathers of the whole of the ummah. Whoever can develop himself to become spiritually purified will therefore become the spiritual son of the Prophet Minna Ahlul Bayt and of the Imams. So Imam alayhi salam tells his son that this is a message from an old father who is nearing death and I, can de I will be departing any time. And now in these last days, I'm thinking more about myself. I'm freed from the bias of desires and the pressures of the dunya. Affairs are cl clarifying themselves for me. And I have reached this conclusion. It's a very serious, there's no joke about it. And it is the absolute truth in which there is no falsehood. I consider you as my part. No, I consider you as my whole. And therefore, whatever will afflict you, it's as if it afflicts me. And I write this letter and message to you, whether I survive now or not, but this is my message. I recommend to you to practice taqwa. And then he says that always build your heart. Don't allow your heart to break down and to die. Build your heart with the dhikr of Allah. Hold on to the message of God strongly. Enliven your heart with maw'idha and spiritual admonishment. Kill the animal desires through zuhud and simplicity and conscious program of avoiding the extra pleasures and the leisures of the dunya. Strengthen it with conviction. Illuminate and enlighten it with wisdom. And tame it and subdue it by the remembrance of death. And Imam alayhi salam continues, it's a long letter, almost 30 paragraphs or more. But I want to concentrate on one because we are in the month of Rajab and we are approaching the middle of Rajab, which is very significant. In one part of this letter, Imam alayhi salam tells Imam Hassan, وَأَلْجِئْ نَفْسَكَ فِي أُمُورِكَ كُلِّهَا إِلَىٰ إِلَٰهِكَ and in all affairs, always rely and trust and depend on God. 
because God is the ultimate protective shelter and because in his hands are the power to give or to take. Whoever has anything or whoever fails to get anything, ultimately God is the power and the source. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ خَزَائِنُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قَدْ أَذِنَ لَكَ فِي الدُّعَاءِ the one in whose hands are the treasures of the heavens and the earth. Everyone seeks treasures. Some people depend on themselves, some people depend on others, some depend on tools. But ultimately, the keys to the locks of the treasures of the heavens and the earth are in the hands of God. Lahu maqalidu samawati wal arum. But the key to open those doors and those treasures, Imam alayhi salam says, is dua. And remember, he has promised that you pray to him and he will answer. In fact, he has ordered you to pray to him so that he can grant you. To ask for his grace and mercy and pardon so that he can forgive you. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ مَنْ يَحْجُبُكَ عَنْهُ and he has not kept anything as a barrier between you and him. وَلَمْ يُلْجِئْكَ إِلَى مَنْ يَشْفَعُ لَكَ إِلَيْهِ And he has not made it mandatory that you must turn to anyone other than him to be able to get closer to him. However, if you have sinned, he requires you to do tawbah. And in his grace and mercy, he does not punish you immediately for your sinfulness and he does not disgrace you whenever you have sinned in public and he has not become very strict in the conditions and the requirements for your tawbah to be accepted and he does not interrogate you harshly and severely in case you have sinned and at the same time ultimately he has never ever disappointed you in his grace in, and mercy. In fact, he has said, you commit one sin, there is only one punishment. You act one good act, and there is ten times the reward for that. So he has always kept the door of dua open for you, and ask from his unlimited treasures, and he can grant you unlimited provisions and mercy your life can be extended, your body's well-being, in fact, your wealth and health can all be provided by him. One of the occasions for dua is the month of Rajab. And in the month of Rajab, the middle, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th, which are known as the Ayyamul Bid. And also amongst the Ayyamul Bid, the 15th of Rajab is important for a, a particular act of dua known as Amal Um Dawood. She was a woman who had trouble. Her son was captured by the enemy and his whereabouts were unknown. He was in prison. Sometimes there was no news. Sometimes she receives news he has died. Sometimes somebody comes and tells her he's alive. She, was, she reached a point where she would pray, no answer. She would ask others to pray, no answer. Ultimately, on one occasion, she happened to visit the sixth holy Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad the Sadiq. Who was sick, so she went to visit him. And incidentally, he asks her, What about Dawood, your son? And before she could say anything, she cries. She breaks down and she says, My son, I've no reach unto him. I don't know what to do. Please, you pray for me. Imam salam teaches her a prayer. He says, why don't you recite dua iftitah? Sorry, not iftitah. Iftitah is for the month of Ramadan. Why don't you pray the dua of istiftah? The dua of najah. The dua which is of ijaba. You do it and Allah will answer you, your prayer. So she's eager, she wants to learn. And then Imam salam instructs her what to do. Uh, that on the, in the month of Rajab, it's very near, he tells her fast on the 13th and the 14th and the 15th and then on the 15th after the Dhuhr and the Asr prayers you have to do these three things number one you recite Hamd a hundred times and Ikhlas a hundred times and number two you recite Ayatul Kursi ten times 
And number three, there are some surahs of the Quran to be recited, the long, the medium, and the short, and the shortest. The long surah An'am, the medium surahs 17, 18, 31, 36, 37, 41, 44, 48, 56, 67, 68. These are the medium sized surahs. And you also recite the short surahs in Shiqaq onwards till the end, chapter 84, till, ayah, till chapter 114. Having finished the, this recitation of the dua, uh, of the Quran, now you start with the dua. The dua is a long one, almost about three quarters the size of dua Kumail. I will just give a quick outline of this dua. It's a powerful dua which, whereby Imam is teaching us how to pray to him. Sadaqallahu al-Azim, the dua starts, because you've just finished the recitation of the Quran. La ilaha illahu, there is no one worthy of worship other than God. Laysa kamithlihi shay, wa huwa sami'u al-alimu al-basir al-khabir. Shahidallahu annahu la ilaha illahu. Everything in creation testifies that he alone is the absolute power. God himself, the angels, and all those who are knowledgeable, truly knowledgeable people. And Allahumma laka alhamdu, laka almajdu, laka alizzu, wa laka alfakhru. And I praise you because you alone have all the beautiful names of power and grace and mercy. And then Imam alayhi salam teaches her to send salawat not on the Prophet. Salawat to start with the angels, not ordinary angels, the chief angels. Send your salawat on Jibra'il and who is Jibra'il? On Mikail and his description, on Israfil. And also on the other carriers of the Arsh. Carriers of the Arsh meaning that Arsh is the seat and the power of the throne which governs the universe. Allah doesn't have a physical body to have a physical throne on which he sits. Arsh as the symbol of the center of power through which Allah governs and the chief angels who by his command govern. And also on the other medium level angels, send your salawat, the kiram al-katibin, the malaika of Jannah and the malaika of, of Jahannam and the malakul maut. Then send salawat on all the messengers, Adam and Hawa incidentally. Hawa was mutahara, she was purified. Hawa was the honorable amongst the humans. Hawa lived in that holy land before they were ordered to descend on the earth. And all, oh Allah, send your special benedictions and salutations on Habil and Sheath and Idris and Nuh and Hud and Salih and Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and Yusuf and Asbat and Lut and Shu'ib and Ayub and Musa and Harun. All messengers, most of whom are mentioned in the Quran. And others who are not mentioned in the Quran. And Yusha and Misha and Khidr and Yasa and Dhil Kifli and Talut and Dawood and Suleiman and Zakaria and Sha'ya and Turakh and Matta and Irmiya and Hayquq and Daniel and Uzair and Isa. But between Isa alayhim salam and the last prophet and Shamoon and Jirjis and Hawariyin and the followers of Isa and Khalid and Hanzala and Luqman. So all the holy beings right till the Arsh. All the holy beings who were sent on the earth. No, and the last messenger. Allahumma salli, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad, warham Muhammadan wa salli ala Muhammadan, ala Muhammad, kama sallayta wa barakta wa tarahamta ala Ibrahim and ala Ibrahim. And on the Imams after the Prophet. And after the Imams on the spiritually developed purified beings who come closer to the Imams and the Prophets and the Angels, the Abdal and the Autad and the Ubbad and the Zuhad and the Mukhlisin and the Mujtahideen. Mujtahid here means the one who makes Ijtihad the ultimate struggle in obeying God's command. One of which is to make research and become the expert in the Sharia. And O oh Lord, send your Salam and salawat even on those whom I've not mentioned. My list is not complete. Oh Allah, why do I need to mention all these names before even I make, present my dua? 
Oh Allah, I want them also to pray for me. Oh, I don't know whether my prayers are going to be accepted or not. Allahumma inni astashfi'u bika ilayka, bi karamika ila karamika, bi judika ila judika. I seek the shafa'a of your generosity to your generosity. The generosity by which you call me and allow me to speak to you, though I'm sinful, at the door I should be kicked out. Don't you dare come to me and speak to me, liar, sinner, cheater, dishonest, abuser. Go away. No, you kept the door open. You said if you come and make istighfar and tawbah, I will let you in. So with the shafa'a of your generosity, by which you invited me, I seek the higher generosity by which you will accept me and answer my prayers. But in order for my prayers to be answered, you also ask me to appeal for others to pray for me. Allahumma bi kulli ma sa'alaka bihi ahadun minhum. Allah, I don't know what specific way to pray to you, but I want to pray to you with all those names which can get me close to you, by which anyone else has prayed to you and you've brought him close to you. And then, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, almost 130 or 40 names of God are mentioned. And then towards the end, Imam alayhi salam again tells her, make salawat on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Now the dua begins. All of this, which is three quarters of the dua, there is no dua yet. Now the dua begins. Allahumma irham zulli wa faqati wa faqri. I'm here before you. I'm a servant. I'm lowly. I'm lowlier than everybody else. No, I'm the lowly of all the lowly ones. Oh Allah. I'm haqir, I'm faqir, I'm ja'ir, I'm mustajir. Oh Allah, I've come to ask for forgiveness. I, I admit to my sins. Oh, incidentally, this dua is being taught to a lady, Om Dawood. Yet the pronouns being used are all masculine. Kwanini. Sababu, this dua is not being done alone. She is invoking others also to pray for her. Anybody else should make this dua also. And ultimately, we will see towards the end that this dua is recommended for everyone other than her also. It's not her only. Nowhere is it mentioned specifically what her problem is. Amazing. So, I'm praying to you. Uh, Hazin, Maheen, Mustakeen. I'm sad. I am overwhelmed. I am desperate, but you are malikun ma tasha'u min amrin yakun. Whatever you will, will happen. Therefore, as'aluka bi hurmati hadha shahr al-haram. Some places and some time occasions are holy and sacred and mercy of God is more available. The month of Rajab is one of them. And also, wal bayt al haram, wal balad al haram, and there are some sacred places if we can go and visit in the month of Rajab, recommended. Wa bi haqqi nabiyik, and I pray to you by the status of your prophet. Oh Lord, she doesn't say I have a son who's missing. Oh Lord, I pray to you the same way that you granted sheath to Adam after Qabil kills Habil. Or oh, the one who brought, who gave Ismail and Ishaq to Ibrahim in his very old age. Or oh, the one who brought back Yusuf to Yaqub. Or oh, the one who removed the afflictions from Ayyub. Or oh, the one who returned Musa, the young baby who was left in the sea in that small basket by the mother, brought back to the mother. Or oh, the one who sent Khidr to Musa. Or oh, the one who gave the to Dawood Suleiman and to Zakaria in his old age Yahya and to Maryam the unmarried you gave Isa and the one who protected the daughter of Shu'aib and the one who arranged for a wet nurse for Musa or the one who has the power to do so or the one who has already done so or the one who is always doing so nobody else has the power to do it I come to you and I present my problems to you. I seek your grace and your forgiveness. Oh Lord, there are some things which are blocking me. 
remove them. There's some zalim who want to hurt me, block them. There are some hasad people with envy who want to hurt me, block them. Oh Lord, there are those who don't want me to worship you, stop them. Oh, the one who can control all the rebellious jinn, stop them from me. Oh, the one who can overpower and subdue the satans of the humans and the jinn, I ask you and I pray to you, bas. Not a, not a single mention of Dawood, my son is in prison. No, general dua. Result, that night she sees a dream, the prophet visits her and gives her the glad tidings. Result, in a few days, as much time as it takes from Iraq to Medina, the sun comes back. Amal of Umm Dawood, very important therefore for anyone in any state of trouble. It's the ultimate expression of the Tawheed of God, of the greatness of his kingdom, and how he is governing the kingdom. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wal Asr. God swears by time. This month of Rajab is important, and the 15th of Rajab. In Al Insan Alafi Khusr. Man, don't spend your time heedlessly. Believe there is a God who cares for you more than anybody else. Carry out the A'mal of connecting to Him. And collectively spread the message. Collectively fight against evil. Sadaqallahu al-Azim.